What's up, guys? This is Deidre with One Shot Gang, and I'm back to hit y'all with another segment. Anytime I come up with an idea or a topic or something that I feel like could be vital to the people, that's when I sit down and put my thinking cap on and give it to y'all straight. So the whole moral of this whole video for me, I feel like, is I realize what it is that I'm put on this earth to do, my mission and my purpose. Everybody has a mission and everybody has a purpose. But in order to get to that mission and purpose, you have to um, process a lot of things. You have to go through a lot of things. You have to learn to let go of a lot of things. You have to learn how to break free of a lot of things. And when I tell you that is not an easy mission to do but i feel like it's my mission on this earth to lead my people to the lake because the lake is wide open and everybody can fit so let's go let's get there i'll hold your hand you hold the next person hand so on and so on we all gonna run to the lake period but the steps to get to the lake is a lot harder than uh what's easy what's comfortable you know it happens to all of us everybody goes through that where they have to make a decision on what's hard and what's the easiest and most of the time our brain is conditioned and programmed to take the easiest way instead of the hard way because we have a fear of failing so when you have that fear of failing you don't want to do things that may be hard you want to do things that's easy and you know the outcome. But then again, at the end of the day, when you know it's easy and you know the outcome and you get the same outcome that you already predicted, it's kind of like now you got to make your next move based off of a choice that you already know. Instead of doing something hard and uncomfortable and you don't know the outcome, maybe it could be better than the easiest thing, you know? But making choices, we do it out of emotion in life and that's basically how you set up your whole foundation for life your life your life in particular and us as people we're only impressioned and taught subconsciously how to prepare for life on what the next person may see fit and you gotta feed your brain with knowledge get it in figure out a way do something unthinkable do something you've never done to see what the outcome might be and then that's how you figure out something new comfort is easy to us so that's why we tend to do what's easy all the time and half the time get the same results so when I'm trying to lead the people to the lake, I just want the people to know that your life and every choice you make is calculated off of your thoughts. So if you want something better, if you see yourself having something better, you have to learn how to remove the block of feeling like you can't have anything better. And it's a hard thing to do. like. You know, for instance, starting when we are kids, we don't have no blocks. There, are, there is no blocks. It's limitless. Like, when you're a kid, it's, it's, it's limit, limitless. So, I ask you in school, what do you want to be when you grow up? Right? But then, it's like it's a trap. Because as you get older and you go through middle school and you go through high school, they no longer ask you that anymore. So, it's basically like, what are you going to do to take the steps to get to where you need to go to be with that thing you said you was going to be when you was little? It's all set up on life beliefs and life uh, teaching. It was a lot of things I was open-minded to, a lot of things that I wanted to do. My, um, my, my favorite one had to be I wanted to be an ice skater. I thought them skating on that ice and twisting and twirling and all that, I thought that was so exciting to me. Like, I was like, listen, I'm going to be an ice skater. And so I told her about the ice skating thing. And she didn't say it in a mean way or nothing. She just said, well, nobody's in, in this family has ever been an ice skater. So you have to understand that as a kid, 
the thought process you have with that makes you feel like you cannot be an ice skater. And you don't know no better. Your mom is the one who's teaching you how to live life. So it's kind of like, all right, dang. Maybe I can't be an ice skater. Maybe that that's not for me. Maybe I need to think about doing something else. Because nobody in this family has ever been an ice skater. So I'm probably not going to be an ice skater either. So let me go to school and get this McDonald's job and work. Because me being an ice skater is just something that's never been done in this side of the family. So who am I to think that big to think that I could do that? The limiting beliefs that you put on yourself when you hear things like that. But I could have been anything I wanted to be. As long as you put your thoughts and activities, the mission, that's the secret in life, period. If you put your thoughts to how you're going to map out the situation starting when you're young, it will create your life going forward. So you have to learn how to not process those limiting beliefs. You have those limiting, a lot of limiting beliefs in your family. Like some people, uh, situations are a lot worse than others. We all have problems. There's nobody exempt from having issues and problems. It's just how you deal with them that makes the ultimate reaction to it. You know, the game you learn, how you put it to your life and how you move forward and pass that game down. Because like I said, we can all go to the lake. Everybody can fit. One of those kids in high school who like to read Harry Potter books. I also like to have my little rolly backpack. You know, I don't know if y'all remember, but it was the little backpack with the wheels on it. And it had the little extendo handle that you could walk around school and you don't got to carry it. You could drag it along. I had one of those. They made fun of me. <laughs> they tripped my uh, rolly backpack. When I read Harry Potter books, I would have to do it by myself because a lot of people weren't into, into reading, let alone reading Harry Potter. So as you start to feel like you're an outcast because you like to do those things and everybody else in your circle is not doing those things, you start to fit yourself into that category of what they're doing instead of standing outside the box and doing what you want to do. And it's just that easy now from going to an ice skater, taking the steps you need to be an ice skater, to falling in line with everybody else, and now you didn't change your whole thought process of being an ice skater. Another mission I wanted to do was go to the WNBA. I sucked when I first started playing basketball. Like, I sucked, couldn't make a free throw for nothing, let alone a layup. But I kept practicing and kept practicing and kept practicing and kept practicing, and I didn't give up on myself, and next thing you know, I turned out to be very good at basketball, very good at basketball, just by practicing every day, putting my thoughts to really wanting to be in the WNBA and really practicing hard so that I could make it there. But of course, life takes a turn. <laughs> and when life takes a turn, basically for me, my turn was the feeling of wanting to be in love, wanting someone who, you know, cared about my thoughts and my feelings. And I'm not saying it's anyone's fault. Unless we as a whole world and society want to take the blame for everything, we can do that. <laughs> but I'm not putting the blame on anyone. Because if people don't have the tools to give you certain things, you cannot be mad at them. You just have to forgive them and figure it out. That's just how life rolls. You know, but a lot of people are bad at forgiveness. So it tends to not work out like that. Glee, present mother, and about 60% emotionally present mother. So that other 40% is the times where I had nobody to uh, accompany or, or should I say, ask about my thoughts and my feelings and the things I wanted to do and where I wanted to be, the other 40%. So that left me a lot of the time. 16, I fell in love with my first love. And that at that age, it kind of, falling in love kind of deters you from any thoughts or dreams that you think you want to do or go if that person is not on the same wavelength as you. So now it becomes all about 
you fulfilling your need of feeling alone and feeling like nobody really know who you are to in turn engaging with someone energetically on my behalf someone who also felt the same so now the relationship becomes let's give this love let's feed them this love but on the back side of it, it it's the control issue because uh, i've been left alone and i've been abandoned and i now i got somebody who's not making me feel like that and I don't want nobody else to have you because that's going to leave me feeling abandoned again. So let me tell you where you can and can't go. What you can and can't do. That is not love. That's not love. And my main mission, I believe, in life is to show love and be loved. Which means we got to start somewhere. It's my favorite saying. And so to own up and take accountability and try to work on the change. Otherwise, it's just going to be passed down and passed down. So he broke free from getting back in another relationship that was the same thing. And when I broke free, it probably was the best thing I could ever do for my life because I'm turning out to get back to me, get back to Deidre and her own self-love and who she is and who she's destined to be and where she's trying to go. That's all, it, that's all it boils down to is loving yourself. Loving yourself. You cannot love anybody else if you do not love yourself. And that is a proven fact because every relationship you get in is going to be fueled by a want or a need or a loss of something. And in turn, it makes the relationship 10 times more chaotic or not too many red flags and a lot of the times we see a lot of red flags but we ignore them because that need of feeling like we need someone <laughs> overrides the, the ability to judge that red flag and say hey that's enough I'm not about to take that from you no more we be that like we have to start somewhere. And healing is not an easy process. It's not an easy process for nobody. I, it took me a long time to get to where I'm trying to go. A very long time. But if we all at least try, one thing that's different from how you've been living your life, one thought that's different from how you've be, been thinking your whole life, your whole life, just one thought, just change it and see how your life could turn out if you just change that one thought. Now, don't get me wrong. Life is a lesson, meaning that you're going to have to go through the ups, the downs, the highs, the lows, the crying, the hurt, the pain. It's, it, that's why it's counselors and therapists and things like that because sometimes trying to get through those, those things is a lot harder than it is for, for the average person. But some people may be skilled at learning how to process that pain and learning how to keep going in the days ahead. But I'm not great at that. So it causes them to not make the best choices when it comes to the lows. So if I have anything to tell my subscribers and my viewers would be to hang around people that lift you up. Hang around. Think is anything wrong with being different? Cause it's not. Aim your life; it'll take you to great heights. So what? You don't gotta do what everybody else is doing. You don't gotta be who everybody else wants you to be. But you do have to play certain positions in certain plays if you want the world as a society. To help you get to where you're going. Because can't nobody get to where they're going by themselves. And you could take some people. Everybody can't go. So it's double standard. <laughs> In life. That's just the way it is. But it's okay to ask for help. Because don't nobody know everything. It's okay to put your pride down. It's all good. First. Love yourself first. And be positive. And everything else will come after that. Because God got you. God got everybody. You just got to be smart.
Play it smart. Think ahead. Think before you make a choice. Is this necessarily the best choice I should be making? What could happen, potentially happen, if I make this choice? Nothing coming from the past in reality, in this moment, right now. What is the consequences that can happen for you trying something new? What is the consequences of you breaking an old thought pattern that you've had all your life? You never know where it could take you. You should try it. Everybody should. That's Deidre with One Shot Game, and I'm out.